Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, now we get to talk about refraction. This is a big one. So this is going to be primarily conceptual. I am gonna show you some calculations in here. However, calculating this is less important than understanding it, okay? So you can follow along, and of course, in the workbook, you can do the calculations. One thing that I'm very careful about when I'm teaching this kind of stuff is that um, I remember back when I was in school, I remember doing all sorts of different calculations and stuff about, we're going to talk about Snell's Law today, and I remember doing all these different calculations, and you have light, you know, hitting blocks, these, these conceptual blocks, and you have the angle of incidence and the angle of, of uh, uh, sorry, of refraction. Then you have the angle of deviation, all this stuff. We're going to talk about this stuff, but it's not really that important to calculate, it's just important to understand. And as a matter of fact, as we move on in the next few lectures, you're gonna start to see that this stuff is so basic compared to what actually happens with the lenses <clears throat> that it doesn't play. You know, you're never gonna be calculating this stuff. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time calculating it, but the principles are important. So I guess I'm telling you this so that I don't want you to really worry about the math here. I want you to worry about the concept. And I'm going to repeat this throughout this lecture. So move into it. So first and foremost, I forgot to kind of put like the uh, timings on this, but that's okay. We, we can move through it, you know, even though we see it. So in air, waves of light travel at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. We already know this, but in other transparent media, including lens, lens materials, the wave, uh, sorry, the waves of light will slow down. All right, very, very important concept in refraction. The concept of refraction is slowing light down. All right, in air, which is our constant, which is what we use as our basis of everything, it travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. Any material that it goes through, that it refracts through, it will be slowing down. So the, the velocity of light in other media, uh, they vary as a function of the material's refractive index. Cool. We just talked about this in the last lecture. I told you we would uh, kind of delve in a little bit, and here we are. All right. So the way that the media, all right, the way that the refractive substance affects light is a function of its refractive index. All right. And the equation for refractive index is the velocity of light in air, which is always going to be 300,000 uh, kilometers per second divided by the velocity of the light going through the material, that gives you a number which is equal to the refractive index. So I want you to remember this, that this is gonna carry over in almost all of the calculations we do. And that is the, the, the symbol that means refractive index. All right, we're gonna be using this all the time. And refractive index is just a number, it doesn't have a unit, However, it is a representation of how much light slows down in a material, okay? I want you to remember that. Write it down. I'm not going to write this down because it's like a lot of words, but it is a representation of how light slows down through the material. So as refractive index increases, light slows down more. <clears throat> slows down. I'm just going to write that, okay? That's a good way to put in your own notes. Now, next... The refractive index of any material varies slightly as a function of the wavelength of light, okay? This implies that different wavelengths of light, they will travel through the same material at different speeds. Again, very, very conceptually, very, very conceptual, sorry. Uh, this is not something that we're going to be really worrying about all the time because most of the time when we talk about light, we're not actually breaking down light into its different wavelengths. However, there are gonna be different things like different lens aberrations that actually, so chromatic aberration, for example, has everything to do with this, that as light kind of travels, you know, in this like parallel form here and hits a lens, let's say, not all the wavelengths. Remember, we, the you know the um, 
white light will compose of all different wavelengths between 780 to 7, uh, sorry, 380 to 760, and all the different colors have different wavelengths. Not everything will refract at the same speed. So you get this weird kind of effect where at a very, very granular level, all the different colors of light reflect, refract differently. I'm having a hard time with the words today. <clears throat> Excuse me, refract differently, and you get a weird aberration. That's, we're going to worry about that at another point. But for the time being, let's just put that in the back of our minds that sometimes different wavelengths of light will actually travel at different speeds. Okay? Let's continue here. So let's complete the following calculation so that we can understand. You will never have to calculate this. Well, I shouldn't say never. Not in the dispensary anyway. If you're doing weird courses that you know really focus on this stuff, you might. However, we're just going to do it once so that we can understand how this works and then move on, right? So if a ray of light okay, travels at a velocity of 200 kilometers per second through a particular lens material, what is the index of refraction of this material? Okay, so we know the equation, we just saw it, all right? And then so now we know the velocity of light is 300,000 kilometers per second, and then it's telling us that the velocity through the material is 200,000. So if we divide one into the other, we get 1.5. And guess what? That is pretty darn close to CR39, all right? So that's the concept. It slows down CR39. Uh, it slows down to 200,000 and it, uh, it refracts, and that is the index, that's the factor of what that lens does to light. Let's do one more. What is the velocity of light as it passes through the air in a lens made of 1.67 index plastic? So this is basically just backwards. So, you know, if you remember high school math, and again, if you're not like a math whiz, um, just follow along here. It's not too complicated. We're just using the same equation, but we're kind of backing it up, right? So we just plug in, we know what the refractive index is already. So it's the 1.67 and we know the constant of light, you know, the constant speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. We just want to rearrange this formula to figure out what the velocity is inside the material. And so we can rearrange this <clears throat> and here we are. We have one point, sorry, 179,640 kilometers per second. All right. Is this important? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, not really. I mean, not, not, not in a mathematical form in the sense that you're ever going to calculate this, but I just wanted you to understand that the basic premise here is that as material, as light passes through material, it slows down. And the higher the index, the more it slows down. You know, we wrote that down previously. That's it. It's a symbol of that. Now we can see it in action mathematically. And that's it. We can move. So, Refraction. Well, when light travels from one medium to another with a different index of refraction, the velocity of light will change, right? It will reduce when passing into a higher index material, material and it will increase when passing to a lower index medium. The only time you're going to see light pass from a higher index medium to a lower one is when it leaves the lens, right? So light's going into a lens. When it leaves the lens and it's coming out, it speeds up again, right? Because it goes from N uh, of the lens, which is going to be, uh, sorry, higher than one, let's say. So we probably should have said greater than one. And then because everything, all the index of materials are always higher than air, which is one. And then it goes back into N is equal to one, which is the refractive index of air. Right. So anyways, don't want to confuse you with this, but it's just the concept that as it goes into a, a material, it's going to slow down. And as it comes out, it's going to speed up again. When rays of light strike a different medium obliquely, obliquely. OK, so at an angle, they are refracted or bent at the interface between the two medium. OK, and then when light passes uh, from a lower index to a higher one, it is refracted towards the normal of the interface and we're going to do one more point here when light passes from a refractive index so a higher refractive index to a lower end it's refracted away from the normal or the interface wow what a mess here right and i'm going to give you actually one more point here the angle of refraction at the interface of the two me medium is governed by snell's law all right so snell's law looks like this ugly thing remember i told you at the beginning of this that you had like all this talk of Snell's law. And I remember when I was in school doing all this. And I know that all the things I just mentioned here are a little bit confusing. 
And uh, it, it kind of upsets me that they are because it kind of takes away from the general premise here. This is the only time I'm going to talk about Snell's law because it is the underlying principle of how refraction works. However, it's not intuitive, right? So I, I really want to focus on intuitive stuff. But let's go to the next slide. I'm going to show you some diagrams that kind of depict Snell's law and, uh, and maybe we'll understand it better and then we can move on because it's really important. All right, so you have a block here. All right, remember I said it's always blocks and it's like we never deal with blocks. So <clears throat> it's always kind of like people get used to understanding this concept and then they're like, where all the blocks go? Uh, but this is your refractive element, all right? So this is gonna have its own refractive index and then you have air on both sides of this thing, right? So out here, n is equal to one. Out here, n is equal to one. All right, and here n is equal to, I don't know, it's greater than one, right? Because all we know, it could be like 1.5, it can be 1.6, it can be 1.7. It's just always greater than one and light's gonna slow down. Now, the interesting thing here is that when light strikes the surface straight on, perpendicular, right? It actually does, it slows down. Okay, so the, the spacing between these guys tries to show how fast it's going. All right. So as it's going at you know its speed of you know its typical speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, it hits this refractive medium and it slows down. That's why these guys are spaced out a little shorter. But then when it comes out, it regains its speed. But notice how other than having slowed down, it's not affected. Its path is the same. What Snell's law was trying to show was that as light is going at its constant speed towards this medium, all right, and hits it at an oblique angle it slows down but also changes its path uh changes its kind of angle of travel right notice how this angle is a little bit different than the one coming in but then when it comes back out it regains its angle right so what this actually creates is a form of displacement right now why is this important well refraction is the concept of bending light of displacing it I want you to hold that for a second because I'm going to go back to that. Here it is, again, depicted with line diagrams, right? So here's the normal we talked about. The normal just being this imaginary line that intersects the medium, okay? So the incident light right here, this guy, okay, coming in. The angle to the normal coming in, all right? So it basically, as, like we were saying, the like Snell's law dictates is that if light hits this medium at an oblique angle it will bend light towards the normal see how it's bending a little bit closer you know the angle is smaller here the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle over here so it's bending towards but then as it kind of comes out over here it's bending away because the angle gets bigger the result here is that again light's leaving at the same path the same angle sorry but it's been displaced right so displaced and that's basically all you need to understand about Snell's law now there are a number of things you know number of courses that will make you calculate this you know with this n sine theta or i probably and n sine i you know prime why why would you calculate all this stuff if we're never going to use it this is concept all right but the important thing to understand is that okay so if we are able if we understand these laws then we're able to actually bend light or actually displace it and make it move. Well, then we can apply this principle, all right, and we could use it intentionally to bend light or displace light the way we want. And it's, that's essentially what we do with lenses. That is the world's worst lens. Let's try a minus lens here. Maybe I could do a better job. Yeah, also horrible. But we can use our knowledge of optics and our understanding of Snell's law to create surfaces that will do this for us in a controlled manner. And that's where I want you to understand this. And we're gonna kind of build on this bit by bit. You can't just throw it all in there all at once. But if you understand that at the very, very basic principle of optics exists Snell's law, all right, Snell, Snell's law, put an apostrophe here, right? You'll never have to calculate it. Just understand that Snell's law dictates that we can bend light in a controlled manner, that's it. All right, and then the rest of the stuff will make sense. All right, moving on. So now the angle of deviation between, you know, we just showed how, let's go back for a second. Oh, 
No, I can't go back. All right, we're not going to go back. But, you know, the angle, so we just talked about this block again, right? So it goes in like this, moves, and comes out. The angle of deviation, so the difference between where it, pop, where it came in and where it popped out, all right? So that rep represents the shift of rays from its original path, okay? It's equal to the difference between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, okay? Basically, what I said. The angle of incidence is over here. The angle of refraction is over here. The difference between the two is how much it moved. Okay. Now, if the sides of the refractive object are parallel to each other, the rays passing through exit at the same uh, angle. Right. So that's what we've been showing the block uh, as they entered, but slightly deviated from the original direction. Again, this is all like physical principles, right? Because remember, like. It's not, this is not, we're not talking about a lens yet. We're talking about a block. When, when have you ever seen people corrected with blocks? But this concept is what we use to bend light with lenses in, again, in a controlled manner. So again, I'm going to, I'm going to use this Snell's law and I'm going to calculate something here. You will never have to do this, but I want you to follow along and I want you to do it in your notes and that way you can say you've done it. <clears throat> but again, do it with a grain of salt, right? Meaning... You're never going to actually calculate this, but I just want you to understand the principle, okay? So a, a ray of light strikes a lens material with a refractive index. So you should know immediately this is your N, right? This is your refractive index, and it strikes it at an angle of 30 degrees, okay, in incident air. So this is your original angle. This is your angle of incidence, all right? What is the angle of refraction? All right, well, Snell's Law, there it is. Okay, so now we can actually plug in all our things. So we know that it's coming in from air, right? So we can actually do this in a little bit of a diagram. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to see. So you got your block, right? So you got this coming in. We know that this is N equal, oops, equal to one. Air is always one, right? The angle here, the angle of incidence is equal to 30. So what it's asking is that when this guy pops out, <clears throat> actually it's gonna pop out right here because we gotta go into the material. It wants to know at what angle is this guy coming out, uh, and we can actually find that mathematically, but we also know that the index of refraction is 1.523, so that's where this guy comes in, all right? So we're just plugging in at this point. So then if you do all this math, and you have to do the inverse sign uh, of, of, the, uh, of the number and all this kind of fun stuff, you end up with a angle of 19.17 degrees. Okay, I hope you can realize now, maybe not because, you know, when you're first learning, you're never sure what, that, what's important and what's not. So I'm going to iterate that, how is this important, right, uh, to, to be able to calculate. But I digress. It's important to understand, right? So therefore, the angle of refraction in this particular case is 19.17 degrees. Okay, so, and then what you would be able to do here, and this, I remember in school, I used to have to do this. So then you would, okay, so now we know that this guy over here, the, the, the light ray coming through the block is, you know, traveling at 19.17. Then we can calculate, that becomes your new incident ray here. Then you can calculate how it comes out. Then you can figure out the difference in the two, which equals your angle D, which is equal to your angle of deviation. And then you did this huge calculation. You did three, you did this, you know, three times and you ended up with understanding this and you still had no clue what you just did <laughs> right so anyways uh again i just want you to understand snell's law for its basic principle and we're going to touch on this when we start talking about lenses you're going to understand this idea that light is being refracted and you can know that in the background snell's law is in action but you're never going to really need to know how to do like this all right so that's pretty much it. Let's talk about how this applies, right? So almost everything we do traces back to refraction, okay? Uh, as far as opticians go, right? When it comes to lenses, when actually when it comes to the eye, the eye is like super into refraction, right? Uh, when it comes to the lenses we use to correct vision, when it comes to contact lenses, when it comes to uh, refractive surgery, right? Surgery, SX is short for surgery, by the way, and there's also an E in refractive. Um, <clears throat> this stuff all comes back to refraction. And actually, refraction comes down to a few things, right? So first, every substance that refracts light will have a refractive index, right? And refractive index is N. And remember, N equals 1, that is air, okay? That's your constant. 
Every, n of everything else is greater than 1. Okay? It's because it slows down in any refractive medium. So everything's always greater than 1. Uh, think of refractors as changing the path of light, right? So we talked about <clears throat> Snell's law. Snell's law is just basically a fancy mathematical principle that proves to you that the path and angle of light changes. And that's it. That's as simple as that, right? And it can be quantified. So we now know that the principle is that, you know, light will bend as it slows down and light will bend again as it speeds up. If, as, as long as it hits things obliquely, right? <laughs> obliquely, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and we know that that can be calculated with Snell's law. And so for the future, we know that if we can make light hit things obliquely and we can do it using math, then we can manipulate light the way we want to. Very important principle, right? I want you to keep that in mind. We just said it in this particular slide that we can use these principles to manipulate light the way we want to. That's important. Remember that. Uh, the eye refracts light, right? So we're going to talk about it in some lectures coming, that all these principles of bending light with lenses, and well, we did it with blocks, but you know, we're going to do it with lenses. The light does exactly that. Uh, sorry, the eye does exactly that, just like lenses do, right? So it's the same principle. And then lenses refract light. And these guys operate on the same principle. They are interchangeable from each other. As a matter of fact, the eye is nothing but a series of lenses. All right, so pretty cool. And Snell's law is more conceptual than something we use in practice. You will never, ever, 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 ever calculate Snell's law. You'll never do it. There's no point. There's no reason. It doesn't make sense. And the thing is, Snell's law is very basic. What we use in lenses is much more complex, but it does use Snell's law as a basic concept, conceptual. Okay, and that's all you need to know about this. So now you have the basic understanding of refraction. We are not done with refraction, but we are done with the underlining mathematical principle that kind of <clears throat> that forms its basis. And now we're going to move on to more practical applications of refraction and how it all works. All right. Well, let's uh, finish off our notes in this one. And I want you to really kind of grasp these concepts. And I hope that you're not really intimidated by a refraction in Snell's law and calculations because again I, I'm going to iterate to you this is not super important the math the math portion I just want you to understand how this works that light is able to bend through different refractive mediums that's it all right enough said let's move on <laughs>